What's going on guys? Welcome back to the uh, red part of our Dominaria set review. Please be sure to check out the other parts on YouTube. We have the white, blue, black, green, colorless, and gold, and lands, and every other thing you got. Um, yeah, so today we're looking at red. Be sure you can, guys can hit me up on Patreon or YouTube, both of which are slash Frank Lepore. If you guys are looking for those links, they will also be in the descriptions below. Um, so we're going to start with Bloodstone Goblin. 2-2 uh, two, two for 2. Great rate for a red card. Whenever you cast a spell, if that spell is kicked, it gets plus one, plus one, and gains menace until end of turn. This card's actually great. I'm not used to, to red two twos for two having this having an upside that gives you two things. I mean, you may never kick something, right? But it's still a two two for two. Usually red guys are two twos for two ones for two or two twos for two that can't block. This guy not only blocks and he's got two toughness and he uh, he gets plus one, plus one. He's a three three unblockable when he's got with the with the kicks and the things this card's good i'm impressed i can even see this making it in constructed depending on how many kicked cards uh there are how many playable kick cards there are and also how good the red deck is but otherwise you're probably just gonna always play this in your limited decks so champion of the flame two mana for a one one trampler it gets plus two plus two for each aura and equipment attached to it wow we're getting aggressive here this this is where this is just now we're just playing now we're just playing Naya Boggles with this guy it being a goblin it being a goblin could also be very relevant especially when we get to some of the later cards in this in this red portion champion flame um this card's interesting I could see this being played and constructed depending on the amount of pr pr sweet enchantments and auras and equipments there are um who knows could be good like if there's an aura that gives like, two, isn't it like the aura that makes something legendary? It's like plus one, plus one flying lifelink. And this makes it a four, four trampling flying lifelink first striker or some nonsense. It's pretty good. Fervent strike. One red target creature gets plus, o, plus one, plus O gains first strike until end of turn. This is nothing new. And haste actually. Is this new? I feel like I've seen this card, but... Maybe I have never seen this card. No, this is a new card. Interesting. Wow, the first the haste is is relevant. Wow, because usually, um, cards like this usually cost like two mana, and you're like, well, I'm never gonna give out a haste of this because I just can't play the guy and play the haste card on the same turn. But this is actually incentivizing you to wait until you can play a guy and haste it on the same turn. That's interesting. Fiery intervention. <laughs> What is this, a robot in a tree fighting? This is great. This art is fantastic. Adam Paquette, I am a I'm a big fan, buddy. So if you're if you're watching the stream right now or watching this YouTube video, good work. Fire Intervention, five mana. Choose one that deals five damage to target creature or destroy target artifact. This card's great. A little expensive for constructed, but you will always play this in your limited decks 1000 percent Fight with fire. It is a bad abrade, but that's why we're not playing it in constructed. Like <laughs> it's I mean, you can't always have a braid in limited. Fight with Fire, 3 mana. Uh, it deals 5 damage to target creature. That's a great rate. If it was kicked, it deals 10 damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. In any number of targets instead? Wow. This could be constructed playable at, at 10, at 5, 6, 7, 8. At 9 mana, you get to deal 10 damage. Wow. Oh, I don't think that, that reminder text actually isn't bad because the first ability only targets creatures. So, I mean, it seems relevant that they specify you can target cre players and, and creatures, players and planeswalkers, because the first part specifically says you cannot do that. Um, that, that reminder text actually makes it make sense. Uh, it's a, it doesn't say those targets can include players, creatures, and planeswalkers because creatures is the one that's specified on the card. I mean, nine mana is a lot, but going just being able to deal your opponent ten damage to the face is crazy. Like, I'm sorry, you get to a point in a game and you're just like, ten damage to your face. Like, this is a card. If you're in a, playing a red deck, three mana for five damage, like even a red control deck, right? Like three mana for five damage is great. That's an insane rate. That's like a roast rate, which is great because it can also hit flyers. Um. But then in the late game, you're just like, if you get to 
10 or less life. You just have to always worry about this card killing you out of nowhere. Yeah, Urza's Rage is playable, and it costs 12 to do 10. This is also divided. Like, Urza's Rage is one target. This can be like, all right, I'll deal 6 to your Chandra, 3 to your Flyer, and 1 to your face. Like, that's insane. And thanks to the Planeswalker rule, the, the Planeswalker change, you can deal it to the player and the Planeswalker. You can deal damage. You can divide it. This card, I am far more excited. I don't even like Mountains. And I am far more excited about Fight with Fire than I should be, just because this is a lot of damage, and it, it is uh, a good rate for both, I think. so. Fire, and then we get to Fire Elemental, and you're like, 5-4 five, for 5. Fire Elemental was one of the first cards I ever saw. I started playing in Revised, and this guy was, uh, this guy was a, a, a fighter. I'll see you later, though, buddy. Fire Fist Adept. This guy's like, hey, he just missed his bus. He's like, hey, uh, can you guys wait? Wait, I just I didn't catch. I got to get to my job. I start my new job today. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls, where X is the number of wizards you control. This guy, this card's interesting. I mean, you're not going to play this in constructed. Three, three, three for five, is not great. Roast, I think, deals like five for three. Roast is, uh, roast is five for two, but it can't hit flyers, which is huge. I mean, the fact that it can't hit flyers is pretty sad. Um. Yeah, but this guy, this guy is cool. Like, if you're playing the wizard deck in draft, like if you have like a blue red wizard deck, um, this guy's amazing. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a flame tongue kavu at that point. Like, even if you're able to deal, this guy by himself deals one damage. Okay, cool. I mean, if you have two wizards, that's cool. That's a three three for five with a shock attached. It just gets better. It just this guy scales well. The first eruption ever, 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 the first eruption that ever happened in life. Uh, the first eruption is one damage to each creature without flying. Okay. Uh, I don't think that, I don't know if that kills anything. <laughs> the second one, you add two red. So on turn three, you play this, you deal one. Turn four, you're adding two red. So you have six mana on turn four. That's what we're looking at if you play this on curve. Uh, sacrifice a mountain. Wait, what? Okay, so hold on. After your draw step, okay, after your draw step. So you draw your card and then you put the counter on it, right? Um, interesting. So yeah, it is in your main phase. Um, roast is an instance. Roast is a sorcery. You're not you're not roasting anybody at instant speed. Yeah, roast is sorcery. That is not a big that is that is not that is not correct. Um all right, so then on turn six, so you get three, four, five. Um, on turn five, you sacrifice mountain. If you do the first eruption, deals three damage to each creature. Hmm. So I lose a mountain, and I only deal like why aren't I like why six on turn on turn five? I'm doing this. That's interesting. I don't know how to I don't know how to rate this card. Like five on turn five is that that could be just too late. Like I guess you're wiping out like and the other thing is once you play this on turn three, your opponents just aren't gonna run their guys into it. Right? Like if you play this on turn three, I'm just not gonna play any more guys until this leaves, right? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. The flame of Keld, two mana. Uh <laughs> Step one, discard your hand. Step two, draw two cards. If a red source you control will deal damage to a permanent or player this turn, it deals that much damage plus two to that permanent or player instead. That's fine. Um, we we talked about this. I already talked about this in a video. And um, it was interesting. Oh, we talked about this in a, in a stream, I think. And it was pretty interesting. Um, the the reason is you can... This goes great in the, in the decks where you dump your hand because then you just play this. You draw two cards. And even if you don't hit burn, like you're still drawing two for two. And then on the, on the on the third third iteration of this, you just get to deal extra damage. So that's pretty cool. I think that seems fine. And it's uncommon. This is an interesting. All these uncommon sagas feel rare. It's really weird. Frenzied rage, two mana, enchanted creature. It's plus two, plus one, and has menace. Um. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't have much to say about you. Gitu Chronicler, two mana for a 1-3. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. 
is this a cycle? Is there a cycle of one three guys for two mana that uh, kick for four and then they do something decent when they get kicked? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, this seems fine. Like, I'll play this as a, as a one three for two, and then I'll play it for six and get an instant or sorcery for my graveyard back. I, I, I'm not going to be excited about it, but I will do it in limited, not in constructed. We're definitely not constructing with this card. G2 Journey Mage, 3-2 for 3. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another wizard, it deals 2 damage to each opponent. Seems fine. Again, like if you're playing the wizard deck, cool. Or you can just play this guy on 3 and then play the other guy on 5 and then you have two two wizards for your shocks. So, uh, G2 Lava Runner, 1-2 one, for 1. As long as there are 2 or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, it gets plus 1, plus 0, and has haste. So it's a 2-2 two, two haste for, for 1 mana. Not terrible. I could see this making a home, finding a home in constructed. Like if you if you're able to, like if you can go turn one, sh you know, shock you, turn two, shock you. This guy, attack for two. It's actually not bad. Even on the late, even in the late turns, this guy's probably always going to be a two two for two. So, with haste, goblin barrage. Four mana, uh, deals four damage to a creature. If the spell was kicked, it also deals four damage to a player or planeswalker. That's interesting. This card is scary. It's significantly more expensive than Goblin Grenade, but uh, being able to kill a creature and deal four damage to their face or a planeswalker is pretty good. Uh, Noob Noob, it's actually just whatever. I'm just talking about the cards in general uh, for both purposes. Um, if there is a constructed Goblins deck, I could see a couple copies of this making it in. Because it is just that versatile. Like, if you're sacking a 1-1 Goblin to deal 8 total damage to a creature and a player, that's fine. But, um... Yeah, in Limited, you probably always play this. Even if you don't have a Goblin, it's still 4 damage for 4 mana, which is great. So... Goblin Chain Whirler. Here's the red uh, Devotion creature. Red, red, red. 3-3 uh, three, three, Goblin Warrior. Uh, first strike, when Goblin Chain Whirler enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each opponent and each creature and Planeswalker they control. It just seems kind of weak, right? One damage to the opponent and the creatures and Planeswalkers they control. One damage. It's not a lot. I guess it could do some work. I mean, it's a 3-3 Goblin with first strike for three mana. That might be the biggest uh, benefit of this card. It doesn't have haste, though. It feels like it should have haste. Look at this guy running. I guess that's the first strike ability. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. This card seems fine. I'm not super impressed by it, but it seems very... It seems versatile. Like, it's a... It's a it's a useful card. Like, you're going to put it in your mono-red goblin deck for sure. Uh, along with this guy, Goblin War Chief, which is uh, a boon to be reprinted. Three mana for a 2-2. Goblin spells you cast cost one less, and goblins you control have haste. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I like it. Obviously, it's a great card. <laughs> Haphazard Bombardment. Six mana for a rare. Here we go. Here's the six mana enchantment for the set. The six mana rare red enchantment for the set. When it enters the battlefield, choose four non-enchantment permanents you don't control and put an aim counter on each of them. All right, I'll choose your two planeswalkers and two creatures. At the beginning of your end step... If two or more permanents you don't control have aim counters on them, destroy one of them at random. Okay, so you're going to you're going to kill two of three of these at random, right? So you're going to they're going to have four, so you kill one at random. Then they're going to have three, so you kill one at random. Then they still have two or more, so you kill one at random. One of these is going to survive. One of the four permanents you put aim counters on is going to survive. But this costs six mana, right? And it's at the beginning of your end step. So the first one happens on turn six, the second one happens on turn seven, and the third one happens on turn eight. So on turn eight, you're still getting rid of one permanent that you dealt with, that you that you try to deal with on turn six. So I don't know. It's a fun card. You're probably going to see it in Commander or... Commander. <laughs> anyway... Jaya Ballard, two red, red, red for a five loyalty planeswalker, plus one at three mountains. <laughs> three mountains. Three red mana, spend this mana only to cast instant or sorcery spells. That seems fine. That's kind of like protecting yourself uh, so long as you have a, re a removal spell in your hand to cast with that three mana. 
The other plus one, discard up to three cards, then draw that many cards. That's actually gas. Being able to just pitch three lands and draw three lands. Or discard zero and, and draw zero. It's also fine. Uh, negative eight. So in, you know, four turns. First turn she goes to six, then she goes to seven, then she goes to eight, then you ultimate. Uh, you get an emblem with you may cast instant and sorcery cards from your graveyard. If a card cast this way would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. That seems fine. I mean, the problem is you're still paying life, and this isn't something that happens immediately, right? And you have to have instants and sorceries in your graveyard. It goes well with the discard ability, but it's not. I think it's one of the weaker ultimates we've seen. So, I mean, like, it doesn't provide you with any inherent card advantage. You have to actually have the cards in your graveyard. They have to be things you've cast. Like, it's great with burn, but I don't know if you're going to get her... Like, you're going to play her on turn 5, go to 6. Turn 7, she goes to 7. Turn 8, she goes to 8. Turn 9 is when you're finally going to ultimate Jay of Ballard. So, um... It's nice that you can actually... I mean, if you're aggressively discarding your instants and sorceries with her plus 1 ability, that's eh, actually pretty good. Uh, it's a past in flames infinitely, but past in flames is literally in one archetype, and the archetype is storm, because you're increasing your storm count. The 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 cards you're 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 flashing back or recasting are not inherently strong; they just increase your storm count. Um, so like if there's a storm archetype in standard, that's incredibly good, but if you're just flashing back your things like a braid, or I don't know. Are there any other instant red instants and sorceries that you want to recast? I don't know. Like, that's the point. Like, it takes four mana. It, it takes four turns to get to this on turn nine. So, like, I don't know. It's fine. But, like, let's not, let's not make it seem like Past in Flames is a card that would see play in standard right now. You know, it's just not. It's not. Jaya's Immolating Inferno, X red red. You may cast a legendary sorcery only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker, obviously. Uh, it deals X damage to each of up to three targets. Wow, that's... This is really good. This card's bonkers. <laughs> I'll target you, your creature, and your plane. This, this reminds me of Clan Defiance. You guys remember Clan Defiance from uh, Gatecrash? Is that what that card was called? Choose one or more. Clan Defiance deals X damage to target creature with flying, X damage to target creature without flying, or X damage to target player. This is basically the same thing. And uh, the casting cost is the same as well. X and then two colors. Um, this card seems great. Wow, this is... This is bonkers. Kill three things. Three creatures. Kill a, two planeswalkers and a creature. Kill a creature or planeswalker in your face. Yeah, this card's... That card feels mythic. Keldon Overseer... Three mana for a 3-1. Alright, this card's 3-1 uh, haste. Uh, when it's kicked, you gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature, gains haste until end of turn. Sure. So this is just Eldrazi Displacer for one less for one more mana, right? Eldrazi Displacer, 3-1 for, th for 3 with haste. You kick it for 2, you gain control of a guy. This actually seems fine. I mean, you'll probably play this on all of your limited decks. It's a 3-1 for 3 at the worst. It's a 3-1 th with, a, with a threaten effect uh, for 6 at best, so... Keldon Raider, 4 mana for a 4-3. When it enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. It's a good deal, and it's a good power. 4 power for 4 mana, and I get to loot. I'll play it. Keldon Warcaller, when it attacks, put a lore counter on target Saga you control. Okay, so actually, that's that's interesting, because unlike loyalty counters, when the Saga counter is put on the Sagas, they trigger. So you're actually triggering this when this guy attacks. That's interesting. It's still a 2-2 two, two for 2, even if you don't have any Sagas, so it's probably fine in the red deck, I guess, because that's just the rate you play <laughs> at. Um, but, yeah, I mean, nothing too exciting here. Orcish Vandal... Uh, 1-1 one, one for 2. Sacrifice an artifact. Orcish Vandal is 2 damage to any target. I'm not thrilled about this card solely because Vandal is typically used for cards that destroy artifacts. Like Manic Vandal, Goblin Vandal. Mr. Tasty, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate the bits. Um, that should be a different animation, but we still haven't solved that yet. I'm going to look up Vandal here. 
Goblin Vandal, destroys an artifact. Keldon Vandals, destroy an artifact. Manic Vandal, destroy an artifact. Oof Vandals, destroys an artifact. Vandal Blast, destroys an artifact. Vandalize, destroys an artifact. This is actually the first card, other than Cephalid Vandal, uh, with the word Vandal in the title. Oh, it sacrifices an artifact, sure. But, like, they all, all the other ones destroy targeted artifacts. Yeah, whatever. All right, it makes sense. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you, Magic. I don't like it, but I'll give it to you. Radiating Lightning. Four mana. Radiating Lightning deals three damage to target player and one damage to each creature that player controls. It's fine. <laughs> you'll play this in Limited, probably. Maybe. I mean, you'll sideboard this in in Limited. I don't see this, this making... Um, I don't see this making any waves in Constructed. Four mana is way too expensive for this ability. I'd rather play uh, Shake the Ground, Shake the Foundation, whatever the one is that deals one damage to all creatures for three mana and you draw a card. That card's great. Um, this Worth noting, this doesn't target your guys. This doesn't hit your guys for one, so your guys will survive. But... Rampaging Cyclops. 4-4-4-4. Four, 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 four. That's a great rate, but it gets a negative 2, negative 0 oh, as long as two or more creatures are blocking it. I knew it was too good to be true. So it's a 2-4 if your opponent blocks the two dudes. Um, so your goal is to just make sure to clean out their creatures. So uh, It's not good against the rats deck if they have two rats, though, because then they're all three twos. Or, no, uh, did they just get plus one power? What if that is, like, the... Um... Let's look up. I'm, I'm going to look it up. You guys probably already know. Oh yeah, plus one. Yeah, so it's great against the rat deck, sure. Run amok. Two mana, target attacking creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample till end of turn. Seems good. Um, I mean, it's a good trick. The trample's relevant. Plus three, plus three, not plus three, plus oh, or plus three, plus one. All of those are relevant. It does cost two, so it's competing with uh, Titan Strength. And uh, you don't get to scry, but I still think it's fine. If there's a red deck, and also don't forget that uh, Electrostatic Pummeler is still in the format. Um, so, you know, there are ways to give double strike. Seismic Shift. Destroy target land up to two target creatures can't block this turn. Four mana. This is play. I think this is playable. Seismic X X seismic random seismic cards in limited are usually pretty okay. That that prevents your opponents from blocking. Um, this isn't one of the better ones, but getting rid of their land and making two of their guys that don't block seems fine. I mean, you're not going to main deck this card, but I can definitely see bringing this card in because uh, the red aggressive decks that prevent guys from blocking are just huge. And if you're also able to keep them off tempo, it's pretty strong. Shiv and Fire. One damage deals two damage to target creature. I'm on board. If the spell is kicked, it deals four damage to that creature instead. So this is just bur this is literally burst lightning, but can only go to creatures instead. Probably still good enough for standard. Or, or for uh for it's it's definitely still good enough for limited. This is might be good enough for standard. I could see that. Yeah, I mean it's fine. It's an instant too, so it, it hits that metric. Siege Gang Commander. Let's talk about the Goblin decks. Uh, this guy's obviously great. Looking forward to playing some Siege Gang in Standard. Makes the card that deals one damage to all the creatures a little bit more relevant, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Siege Gang Commander made a, a Standard appearance. So. 1-1-4-1. One, one, one. Skirk Prospector. Classic. Just Classic. And, you know, again, probably going to see play. Being able to sack your goblins for mana is just fine. Skizik. Ooh, interesting. Four mana for 5-3. Trample and haste. Uh, you sacrifice it if, it if you don't kick it. So it's basically, this was, uh, this is one of the first takes on ball lightning where they're like, here's a 6-1 with trample and haste. And you got to sacrifice it at the end of the turn. And this, this is Skizik. They're like, let's cost, make it cost five. And you don't have to sacrifice it if you kick it. So, that's pretty sweet. Um, I don't know if this is going to see any play in standard. Probably not. Maybe. I guess it depends on the deck, right? 
Um, I recently did a cube draft where we took Pitiless Horde, which is the black card. It's the it's a five three for four mana for three mana, and you can dash it for four mana. And I actually boarded it in because it was great against opposing planeswalkers. Like they would have a planeswalker and they wouldn't think I'd have any answer to it, so I'd dash in the Pitiless Horde and just kill their planeswalker. But I mean, if that's a possibility in standard where you can flash in a Skizik, uh, you know, by flash I mean play it when they're not expecting it, and then you know haste away their planeswalker. It's it's worth considering. That's what I'm saying. Squee the Immortal, legendary creature goblin, 2-1 for 3 mana. Another goblin, by the way. You may cast him from your graveyard or from exile. This uh, this is never going away. Two-headed giant. <laughs> this, that's a format magic. It's not a creature. 4 mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever two-headed giant attacks, flip two coins. If both coins come up heads, two-headed giant gains double strike. If both heads come up tails, two-headed giant gains menace. Okay, so the only thing you're, you're not looking for is heads and tails that's pretty much it so that's pretty uh this card seems fine you're always going to play this with limited 100 percent of the time i don't know if standard's in a place where we're at four fours for four with abilities that are that we can't really control so you know i either if you want menace you want menace if you want double strike you want double strike if you're looking forward to killing their seven seven with double strike uh and you end up getting menace i don't know I don't, I, I don't see this um, I don't see this being constructed playable but probably fine and great and limited Valduk Keeper of the Flame 3 mana for a 3-2 at the beginning of combat on your turn uh, for each aura or equipment attached to Valduk create a 3-1 relevant creature token with trample and haste exile those tokens so this is just basically uh, he has Chandra's plus 1 ability for each aura or equipment attached to him that's fine i mean it's a three two for three at the worst right and if you happen to get an equipment or an enchantment on this guy it's just gravy uh i don't see this guy being playable and constructed uh that's just too much work and uh two for one potential is pretty bad but you know that's life varix blade wing not to be confused with rorix uh two different you know that's it's a it's a brotherly it's a dragon brotherly thing you know uh, they're always being compared. Hey, are you Rorix? No, I'm Varix. Uh, we look the same. We get this all the time. I'm sure. Four 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 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you create Karox Bladewing. Oh god, this is a whole thing. A legendary four four red dragon creature token with flying. So you got Ver Varix, Rorix, and Karox. <sighs> I don't know what the Blade Wings were thinking when they named their children, but this is just basically. This is Broodmate Dragon in mono red. Uh, and instead of costing six, it costs seven, but it can also cost four, which I think is pretty sweet. This card's great. Broodwing Dragon always saw play. Broodmate Dragon, not Broodwing. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm combining Bladewing and Broodmate. Uh, Broodmate Dragon always saw play. It was a really strong card. And having this card that you can either play on turn four or on turn seven is pretty sweet. Uh, I would not be surprised if we saw this card in standard. Because it's great. Uh, also, please, please windmill slam this if you open it this weekend at the pre-release. Warcry Phoenix. Four mana for a 2-2. Flying haste. Like you do. Whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you may pay three mana if you do return. So Battle Cry. Return this to the battlefield. Tapped and attacking for three mana. This is actually great too. Uh, this is surprising because there's not many Phoenixes. Phoenix Eye. Uh, that are that are uncommon and not rare, but this set has a lot of surprising uncommons that are not rare. So I don't think this is anything to be shocked about. Um, what I say, battle cry? Yeah, battalion is what I meant from uh, from Gate Crash, Oath of the Gate Gate Crash, Gate Oath of the Gate Crash. I don't Oath of the Gate Gates Gate Crash. Whoo, there are so many sets. Um, is it two two flying haste for four? The, the best part about this is not the mana you pay up front, because that's annoying. The best part is that for the rest of the game, as long as you can attack with three guys, you will have a 2-2 flyer coming back from your graveyard. Again, I don't think this is constructible. This is a very expensive... Four, like, you're going to need to play four mana Chandra or four mana Warcry Phoenix, and this guy doesn't just doesn't win. So, that's unfortunate. Um, but in limited, just please take this 4-4 flyer with haste every time. Warlord's Fury, one mana. Uh, creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn, draw a card. This is one of those cards where someone's going to put it in a combo deck because it's a one mana card that doesn't need a target and it cycles itself. So uh, you're going to use this in your Jeskai Ascendancy deck to give your creatures first strike 
and to draw a card and to untap all your guys and your sylvan carry added so you're going to tap them for a million mana and uh, then we're going to get the last card called wizard's lightning three mana for three damage to any target that's like lightning bolt but wait it costs two less if you control a wizard it's lightning bolt if you control a wizard this card's just great um, obviously lightning bolt is probably too strong for standard I don't think so but um, you know wizard's lightning seems fine uh, you're going to play it in your wizard deck, you're probably not going to play it outside of your wizard deck because no one has time for like, I don't know, puncture block. Name a three mana, three mana burn spell that deals three, so it's not going to happen. But if you're playing a wizard deck, this is a great inclusion. So, one mana for that. Uh, red actually seems surprisingly sweet. I'm impressed. I love the ten damage spell that you kick, and I also love uh, Rorix Bladewing's Brothers that you kick. So those are pretty sweet. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys have been, been enjoying the set review. We still have the green to do. We'll probably do the green uh, tomorrow for those watching on Twitch. And we'll probably do the gold and uh, a lands tomorrow as well. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you guys are watching on YouTube, slam those like and subscribe buttons. And either way, you guys can check me out at patreon.com slash franklapore if you want to help support the channel or, you know, support the content. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Check out the other set reviews if you enjoyed this one. And I'll see you next time.